After saying goodbye to my dad and stepmom, we left Cusco and started our drive home. We had originally planned to head back to Ecuador through the mountains, since we had followed the coastal route heading south. But because we were running out of time, money, and the rainy season was starting, we decided to retrace our old route along the coast, which was sure to be faster and rain-free. The fastest way for us to get to the coast was to take the highway from Cusco to Nazca. And while the highway is in really good shape, it covers a lot of windy mountainous terrain, and it took us two days to get there. Fortunately for us, when we arrived at the small town of Yaka, we saw a sign for a campground. Unfortunately, it was closed, so we asked the first people we saw if there was somewhere else we could camp. They said yes, and then they invited us to dinner. We headed out from Yaka bright and early the next morning, and we soon encountered a prime example of exactly why driving in Peru is so dangerous. You'll notice the truck in front of us doesn't really feel like it should stay in any one particular lane. And let me assure you, this isn't an anomaly. This is just kind of how they drive. It's astoundingly dangerous. And I'd be curious to know what the average life expectancy of a Peruvian truck driver is. And it's kind of frustrating, because the only way to drive from northern South America to southern South America is to go through Peru. You have to run this gauntlet. Late in the day, we finally arrived at Nazca, putting the windy mountain roads behind us. I for one was glad, because at least in the flat desert, you have the option of getting off of the road and out of the way of the decidedly homicidal Peruvian truck drivers. In Nazca, we camped out at the same campground we used on the way down. It's a bit overpriced, but it's really green and comfortable. And from there, we drove full throttle, basically all day, across the flat desert roads. We made it to Lima by mid-afternoon, and this time, it took us a full three hours to cross the city. Fortunately for us, we had a friend waiting on the other side. He spent another great night at my buddy Aldo's house, chatting with his friends and family and telling them stories from our entire trip. Then we had another day blasting across the barren desert until we arrived at Guadalupe, where our friends the firefighters took us in and let us stay another night. And they invited us to dinner and shared their Wi-Fi with us. In the morning, we awoke to our second flat tire of the trip. Fortunately, we got it fixed easily enough. Actually, the tire fixed itself. By the time we pulled the tube out to check for the hole, the slime inside the tire had already sealed it. And we got back on the road just in time to see this truck full of pigs driving through the middle of town, which I really thought was going to be the high point of my day. But things got better. As we headed north again, we started to see actual real live trees growing out of the desert sand. And when we arrived in Mancora that night, intent on camping on the beach, we were intercepted by my new friend Wijer, who inducted us into the world of the Moto Posada. We had been hearing about the Moto Posadas for the entire trip, and now, one night away from home, we finally found one. Or I guess I should say, one found us. Wijer introduced us to his friend Emmy, another motorcycle rider. She let us stay in her house and gave us a place to park our motorcycle, which was honestly much more comfortable than camping on the beach. The next day we left Mancora and made the short hop over to the Ecuadorian border. It's 9.30 and we're about to start our last border crossing for a while. Looks like it's going to be quick because there's only one border crossing station, kind of like the one in Uruguay and Argentina. Hopefully it's fast and you can go directly to Cuenca. Hopefully. Well, that was fun. It took us 50 minutes, but we're, we're good to go. Uh, one observation about the border here, they have this great, like, brand new, shiny border crossing station that they're not using the way it was designed for. <laughs> it's like, mostly empty, the immigration is way over there, and Aduana is here, in a tiny little dark room that you can't see into. Ah! <laughs> By this point in the trip, I consider myself to be something of a border crossing aficionado. And it really annoys me to see ones that are poorly designed. That combined with the fact that I'd just driven through Peru made me kind of grumpy. But I was soon feeling better. In fact, I was feeling better as soon as I got to the next gas station. Because gas in Ecuador is really cheap. It's like a quarter of the price of the next cheapest place in South America. Which is sure to lift the spirits of any motorcycle traveler. We made our way through the coastal banana fields and up into the mountains to the city of Cuenca by mid-afternoon, where we received a warm welcome from Gabby's family and were promptly fed a home-cooked meal courtesy of her grandmother. I have to say, I do love to travel, 
but it's also really, really nice to come home. So today is January 4th. This is the one year anniversary of- Happy anniversary. <laughs> of when I left the United States to start my trip. So we figured it would be a good time to let everybody know um, what our plans are for the future. Plan number one. We are getting married. We're getting married. <laughs> um, and it turns out this is an incredibly complicated and expensive process. It's probably going to take longer than the entire trip and cost several thousand dollars. Probably um, more than all the money we spent on the trip. Could be more than the money we spent on the trip. Yeah. So if anybody wants to help us out with that, uh, there'll be a link to my PayPal account in the description below. Also, thing number two... We can't keep the motorcycle <laughs> here in Ecuador. And it's also not legal to sell it here in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can sell it to somebody in the United States. I just have to send the title back to the United States, I think. So if any of my viewers out there are in the United States and you want to buy a KLR that is in Ecuador, uh, let me know. Leave a comment or send me an email or Facebook me or something. You so thing, thing number three, we want to know what else you guys want to see. We have a ton of footage of us just driving. Um, and I was thinking of putting up maybe a, a playlist, something like slow TV style, of just thousands of miles of motorcycle driving across Latin America. Um, so that's one thing. And the other thing would be maybe equipment reviews, questions about technical stuff, anything like that. So if you guys would like to see stuff like that, please let us know in the comments. Uh, and thing number four... Thing number four... We might have a farm very soon, so if you would like to see uh, more things about the farm, let we, us know. We can do that as well. <laughs> we'll probably also be starting a volunteer program um, because we know a lot about that now. And <laughs> so, we need help. And we're going to need a lot of help. So, you know, if you want to come to Ecuador and help us out with the farm, let us know as well. We'll put up uh, eventually a link to a workaway page or something like that uh, and then yeah people can come help us on the farm yeah. yeah so that's all for now if you have any comment or question please let us know and we'll see you next time <laughs> <laughs> perfect